Hey everyone, this is David Brown with the migration update for April 26th, 2025 from the Derby Hill Hawkwatch. The early morning was warm with temperatures in the upper 50s with calm winds and on and off rain, but overall a nice morning to be out looking at warblers. The back corner near the number seven sign has been really good for warblers yesterday and today. Here's one of the warbler highlights from the morning. We see a warbler that's yellow underneath, including a yellow throat, a grayish head, and a white eye ring. This is a Nashville warbler. And here's another bird that's just returned recently. We have a bird that's gray overall with a black cap to the head, a black eye, and some orange under the tail. This is a gray catbird. Right at 9 a.m., the weather began to change. The wind shifted to a light westerly wind that felt a bit colder, and it all of a sudden just got really foggy over the course of about five minutes. And that fog lingered, and then it turned into more drizzle, but unfortunately it kind of prevented any real hawk flight for a few hours. We did enjoy watching a few Baltimore Orioles come into the feeders, and they were eating the suet, and then we actually put out some oranges for them, and they were eating that. For the morning, I had 55 species. As we got into the afternoon, the winds really strengthened and became too strong to really have any hawk migration, so Kim and I spent some time lake watching. Over the course of a few hours, Kim and I had around 70 Caspian turns, including this one that was flying around with a fish. Here's the bird that made all of those hours worth it. We were looking at the galls and turns that were coming by, and there was a decent number of herring galls, and I spotted a white-winged gall mixed in, and I got a lot of photos as it went by, and it turned out to be this Iceland gall. So you can see it's a very pale shade of gray on the upper side and towards the wingtips. They're mostly white. They do have a little bit of black, which is something that helps distinguish it from the similar Glaucus gall, along with the slightly smaller size. In direct comparison to a herring gall, the Iceland gall would be around the same size or maybe slightly smaller, whereas a Glaucus gall would be bigger than a herring gall. But I've been on the lookout for either Iceland or Glaucus all season and hadn't had either, so either one would have been a new species, but I'll take this very handsome adult Iceland gall. And if we compare that Iceland gall to this American herring gall, notice all the black in the wingtips of the herring gall. And if we go back to the Iceland gall, just very white wingtips. So even from a distance, that really stands out that they don't have any of that black. And also compare the shade of gray on the back of the bird, on the wings and the mantle. It's just a, a lighter shade on this Iceland gall than it is on the herring gall. Here's an immature herring gall, and you can see all of these gray feathers on the back have already been replaced. While lake watching, I had 31 species. I had three new species for the season today, which were black and white warbler, common yellowthroat, and Iceland gall, bringing the season total to 148 species. I recently learned about salt potatoes, and someone actually brought me a sack of Heiner Waddles salt potatoes, so Kim and I whipped some of those up for dinner, and they were very good. Taking a look at the hawk count report for our migrating raptor totals, today we had five turkey vultures, one osprey, one bald eagle, four sharp-shinned hawks. We had one golden eagle, which we saw turning the corner of the lake while lake watching, and two American kestrels for a total of 14 migrating raptors. That brings the April total to 52,949 and the season total to 71,252. Taking a look at the forecast for tomorrow, they're calling for rain showers in the early morning and then becoming mostly sunny in the afternoon with a high in the mid-50s. Winds northwest at 15 to 25 miles per hour, so we'll be down at the south lookout. And that's a unfavorable wind direction and pretty strong, so I would expect light, maybe moderate migration, um, You know, maybe some turkey vultures pushing through and small numbers of other things. But overall, it's looking pretty unfavorable, so wouldn't expect much for tomorrow. For Monday, it's looking sunny with a high in the mid-60s with light and variable winds. So after these couple of lousy days, I'm thinking that with those good conditions on Monday, we could end up with a pretty big flight. And we'll see how the wind settles in. It's a little bit of a toss-up, whether it'll be north lookout or south lookout or maybe both. 
And for Tuesday, isolated thunderstorms in the morning, then mainly cloudy with thunderstorms likely in the afternoon with a high near 75, winds south-southwest at 10 to 20 miles per hour. So definitely keep an eye on Tuesday as a potentially big day. I know people see the rain and the thunderstorms and they get scared, but that's usually just a sign that we have fronts coming through and that's when we get the really big days. So as we get closer, we'll see what the timing is of the warm front and the cold front. But as long as it's not too rainy on Tuesday, we'll definitely have the right winds. Well, today felt like there were a couple different parts. There was the early morning when it was really good for warblers and other songbirds and just a lot of activity with the light winds and warm temperatures. Then there was the unfortunately really lousy time as we came into hawk watching when it just got really foggy and the wind was picking up from the west and the temperature started falling and it was rainy. So unfortunately the hawk watch was pretty much a bust today, which is unfortunate because there were some people from out of town who were hoping to see some hawks. And then there was the afternoon when it started to clear up a little bit, um, enough that we could do some sea watching, but there were really strong winds that would prevent a hawk flight. It looks like tomorrow will be a sit in the car at the South Lookout kind of day, but after that, maybe we'll have some good days coming up. So hope to see you out soon at Derby Hill. From Lycobirds, this is David Brown. Thanks for watching.